My name is Tony Hyman. I'm a director of the Max Planck Institute at Dresden in Germany. And for the second part of my talk, I'd like to tell you about polymers, microtubules, which are a fascinating part of the mitotic spindle, which I've illustrated over here in this little uh, cartoon. If you remember in the last talk, and when we're discussing about scale in biological analysis, microtubules are organizations of protein molecules called tubulin, shown here. And tubulin molecules come together to organize these microtubule polymers. Now you can look at microtubules growing in cells, and in this movie you can see the ends of microtubules growing throughout our C. elegans embryo. The ends of the microtubules are marked with a protein called EB1, which is known to follow and recognize only the beginnings of microtubules growing from centrosomes. Now, microtubules have interesting organization. On the top, I've shown you dimers. We know the structure of the dimer in detail from a number of different structural techniques, such as crystallography and also from uh, electron microscopy. And dimers form head-to-tail arrangements of protofilaments, which I've shown down here using a technique called atomic force microscopy. But then these protofilaments associate side to side to form a tube. And in vivo, there are about 13 protofilaments per microtubule. And the bottom, you're seeing a microtubule by, in a technique known as vitreous ice, where you can see the individual protofilaments. The interesting thing about microtubules is that they grow from their ends. So you have a polymer, which is the tube, and individual subunits come onto the ends, and they leave the ends. And therefore, you have an on-rate of tubulin subunits and an off-rate. And the growth of microtubules is defined by these different rates. The other interesting thing about microtubules is they have polarity. So you have a tubulin dimer, but the dimer is a heterodimer with two different subunits, alpha and beta. And those alpha-beta subunits set up a polarity inside the microtubule with the beta subunit at the plus end. So the beta subunit marks the plus end of the microtubule. And in the cell, the plus ends tend to be out in the periphery of the cell, and the minus ends are concentrated at the centrosome. So a microtubule will nucleate from the centrosome, grow out through the cell with its plus ends leading. So it has dynamics, but it also has polarity. Now, we can look at microtubules growing in vitro. So you can isolate tubulin from cells. One of the key places we isolate it from is brain. There's a massive amount of tubulin in brain because it makes up all our neurons. And then we can study microtubules growing in a test tube, as I've shown in this movie. The big structure here is a centrosome, which we've also isolated from the cell. We've isolated tubulin, and you can see it growing out along the cover slip um, simply from uh, the tubulin molecules themselves. So in theory, Microtubules do not require any other proteins to grow. Um, these are just simple polymer systems.